Hi. Um, it's my first time to do a real live stream and tell everybody about it. So I'm so excited. It looks like we have quite a few people on. Um, this is Caroline. I'm Caroline from So Can She. And today I'm going to talk to you about our color by number quilt along. Um, let me set my computer here to silent so it won't go off on you. Okay, so uh, last year I posted a blog post about how I quilted this quilt back here. And this is my color by number quilt. It is actually a very simple style, a very simple Bargello style quilt. And you can see it's just squares. Bargello quilts are beautiful. They can get all kinds of intricate patterns, even hearts and, and intricate designs in them. But this is very simple. The Bargello pattern just goes up and down and it's all squares. So it's really easy to do and you can use back quarters. So when I posted, and I'll put a link down below when we're done, um, when I posted about how I quilted this quilt, I just put out there, maybe next year we should do a quilt along because the fun way that I quilted this quilt, free motion, is that I posted a different design in each color block. So we have got 14 different fabrics in this block and each fabric is repeated 12 times. So I picked a simple design and I repeated that simple design 12 times. And that was in one quilt setting, which was very easy. I didn't get very tired. And I was able to practice that free motion quilting design 12 times. And it was really fun. And I was done. I ran out of blocks before I was out of ideas. And I thought it would be really fun to do it again. And let's do it together. So let me see what we have here for the comments. Ooh, Ursula is in the UK. It's 6 p.m. there. Hello. Um, we've got Peggy. C. Lombard, anyway, Anne, Melanie, Joy, welcome to my live stream. So I'm really excited to do that with you. So all you need to do to join us in this little quilt along is get yourself a fat quarter bundle or 12 fat quarters, and then you can access the free tutorial with some downloads on my website, and I will put a link to that. It's on my So Can She blog. So the downloadable materials that are free are, here's a little coloring sheet or a layout for, um, for your quilt. And then it also has some little tags that you can use to label your uh, fabrics to keep them all so that you can make sure your pattern turns out just like that. So what you'll need is, I'm going to do mine this time with fat quarters. I think that'll be really easy. Um, our next video, I'll do a quick tutorial on how to sew the quilt together. Um, but you don't really need that because it's all on the blog. So the fabrics that I picked, I'm really excited. I found this bundle on Amazon. These are um, Robert Kaufman fat quarters. And I just loved this combination. Um, it's just so pretty. It's kind of like sherbet. <laughs> but I need 14 and this fat quarter bundle, I'll also put a link to it if you want, but you don't have to do the same quilt as me, but um, there's 12 fat quarters in this bundle and I need 14. So I searched through my stash of solid fabrics and I found this one. And this one is just a tiny bit lighter than the lightest fabric here. So this I think is gonna go really well. It'll just be the lightest fabric in my quilt. And then I looked at the dark and I picked a dark pink solid that is going to, it's just a tiny bit darker than the darkest one here. So I think that these will go really well and it will give me, I'll just cut a fat quarter out of this and a fat quarter out of this. And I think that this is going to give me a beautiful quilt. Who am I kidding? I know this is gonna give me a beautiful quilt because these are beautiful fabrics. So I picked solids for my quilt because when I show you how to do the quilting as we move along, using solid fabrics is going to make it very easy for you to see what I'm doing. Of course, you don't have to use solid fabrics. You can use whatever fabrics you want. Just go ahead and pick out 14 fat quarters or you can use yardage. You'll need a third of a yard of each fabric if you're using yardage and all the information is in the blog post. 
Um, if you want to try and find it uh, before I post this in the links, you'll just go to SoCanShe.com and then click on free quilt patterns. And it's in there. It's called the color by number quilt. So after you've picked out your 14 fat quarters, you will go ahead and cut one three inch tall strip from each one. So from each, so you'll have three. So did I say one? Three. You're going to cut out three, four, five inch tall strips from each one. It'll use up 15 inches of fabric and you'll have a little bit left at the top. So 14, three times three. So that's how many strips that you're going to need. Three strips from each back quarter and they're all five inches tall by 22 inches wide or however wide your fat quarter is. And then what you'll do is you will place them in the Okay, I think we I think we lost it for a minute, but we're back. Okay, so then you'll place them in the order. So I'm I don't think obviously this is not the order I'm going to put these in, but say this is the order that I'm going to put my fabrics. This would be one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to fourteen. So go ahead and layer your fabrics in an order that you think will be pleasing to you. Um. And on your quilt, this order is going to be the first strip. So only on the first row, only on the first column, will all of these fabrics be in that exact orientation, that exact, you know, one through 14. The first one is one through 14. But then you see our next row here is going to be 14 and then one through 13. But we'll get to that. But you'll just want to decide a pleasing and really what I think is really pretty to do is to go dark, light, dark. That's kind of what I did with that quilt. You can see only I threw that really bright red in there right in the middle. So you can do that. You can go dark, light, dark and throw a bright one in somewhere and mix it up a little bit. Or you can go light to dark or dark to light. Or you could go like, if you don't want to use light and dark, you could go like orange down to red. <laughs> or you can do like blue down to green, blue to aqua to green would be really pretty. So you'll just want to arrange your 14 fabrics in a pleasing combination and then number them one to 14. And then of course you'll cut out these little, cut out these little markers and pin one on each fabric so you can keep them in order. And really that's all we're gonna talk about today. Um, next time, which let's do this in a week or so. I'll make sure and um, send you out a newsletter to let you know when we're doing it, but we'll do it in like a week. So we need to, we need to get started on this. So um, we will go ahead and, so just go ahead and cut out your fabrics and then we'll get going. Now, as soon as I get done with this, I'm gonna sit down and write down a blog post and I'll post it on the So Can She blog. And if you get the So Can She newsletter, you'll find out about the blog post tomorrow morning and it'll have all this information and I'll put a schedule up there of when we're going to do our videos. So the next video will be just a little how-to of how to sew your quilt together. And then I'll give you time to sandwich your quilt and then we'll just get started. And we'll have 14 videos. Each one will show a different easy quilting design to go in the quilt. Now, I love quilting with rulers. I also free motion quilt without rulers. Free motion quilting is still free motion quilting when you use rulers. It's just like when you write with a pencil, you can use a ruler to help you draw straight or you can draw a straight line without using a ruler. So that's really a good way to compare them. You can do the same designs with or without a ruler, just the ruler is going to help you do it more accurately. But at the same time, just like when we're writing with a pencil and paper, the ruler kind of makes you go slower because you're having to pay attention and draw along the ruler, right? Whereas if you didn't have a ruler, you just draw a straight line. So using rulers makes the designs more accurate, but it also takes a little more time. So sometimes if I'm not in a hurry, I will go ahead and I'll use rulers and I'll make my quilting super accurate. But um, if I am really in a hurry, then I don't use rulers usually. But rulers can be really good for stitch in the ditch to help you stitch in the ditch more accurately. So let me see if we have any questions. 
Hello, everybody. Oh my gosh, we've got people from all over. So exciting. South Carolina, San Diego, Florida. Hey, everybody, Georgia. Okay, so I don't see any real questions. Does anybody have any real questions? Do you guys already love quilting with rulers? Um, I can make some suggestions. I could, if you don't already have a selection of quilting rulers, um, I suggest you have a straight one and a curved one. Uh, it's just a simple arc. Those are really the most that you need. Uh, there's a lot of fancy quilting rulers out there, but just like there's lots of fancy drawing rulers out there, most of the time we'll just use a curve or a straight line. So, so I can, uh, in the blog post that I write, I will put a suggestion for a simple kit of starter quilting rulers that if you want to get, you can, you don't have to. And like I said, I will show you how to use every, I'll show you how to do every design without rulers. If I do it with rulers, I'll also show you without, and a lot of them probably won't use rulers at all. So um, Ursula Kennedy asked, do you pre-wash your fabrics? Generally, no. Um, I don't pre-wash my fabrics because if I started pre-washing, I would have to pre-wash all of them because I want them for each quilt. I want them either to all be pre-washed or all not be pre-washed. I really like the effect that after I do my quilting, um, I will wash the quilt and everything will shrink up a little bit. There's usually about 10% shrinkage. Everything will shrink up together. The batting and the quilt, everything, and it looks all crinkly. And I think that's a beautiful look. Um, that quilt back there has been washed and loved and it's already crinkly and, and soft and wonderful. So that's why I don't pre-wash. Um, if the, the exception would be deep, deep red fabrics and deep, deep orange fabrics. Sometimes those do have a tendency to bleed and you can often tell that they're going to bleed by just like spritzing them with some water and putting like a white, a scrap of lighter fabric on top or something. And it, if it bleeds right into it, you know, it's going to bleed. And so those deep fabrics, there's a product called Color Catcher, which Color Catcher has actually saved a couple of my quilts. I've put it in the wash with a quilt that's already sewn. And it's, I had a quilt that started to bleed when I was just um, pressing the pieces. And so after it was done, I threw it in the wash with some Color Catcher and it, it saved the quilt. It, it was fine. Anyway, so you can use that to, it somehow grabs the extra pigment out of the water and it'll make your fabrics okay. So let's see here. Um, Berta says she's never used rulers, but it sounds like fun. It is very fun, uh, but it's still free motion quilting. So it can't like solve all our problems, but they are fun. Okay, let's see here. Barbara says she has rulers, but has not tried them. I totally recommend you at least try them because if you try them and you don't like them, then you can sell your rulers. They're very expensive, or you might find that you love them. Let's see here. Oh, see Lombard, I bet your name is Carol, am I wrong? Anyway, she says she took a ruler class, had a major boo-boo and now has a fear of rulers. So I hope it wasn't an injury, uh, like a needle through your finger or something, but um, I don't want you to be afraid of rulers. I think they are a tool, a sewing tool, and we can use them or not use them. We don't have to. Let's see here. Um, Natalie asked, where is the sample directions? If it's for the quilt, you go to my blog, socanshe.com, click on quilt patterns, and then click on, you'll scroll through, and there's the color by number quilt. It's that exact quilt. Uh, but I'll also put a link in below when we're done. Okay, what does a quilting ruler look like? Oh boy, are you gonna make me go get one? I'll go get one. Okay, sorry. Here's my quilting rulers. All right, so this one is in the sample kit that I'm going to suggest you don't have to, but it has some good rulers and they'll probably be the only ones that I use on the quilt. So if you get the sample kit, then you don't have to worry that I'll use a quilting ruler that you don't have. But they're all very, 
there are lots of companies make lots of similar rulers. So don't worry about having the wrong ones. Now you cannot use cutting rulers because cutting rulers are too thin and you can accidentally jump your sewing machine foot, which is a special free motion quilt for, foot for rulers. You can actually jump your sewing machine foot up on top and so hit the needle on top of here, which could break the needle even worse. It could mess up the timing on your sewing machine or you could have an injury. I hope that's not what happened to our friend here. But um, so here's one and it's thicker and the thickness will depend on your sewing machine. There's three different heights of rulers right now. We've got the low shank. If you have a low shank quilting or sewing machine, there's a special foot, a low shank ruler foot. And then there are special rulers that work with that. If you have a high shank sewing machine, then you'll get a high shank ruler foot and the rulers are a little bit thicker. And these are actually the thickest of all because these go with a long arm machine and I have a sit down long arm. So I use these on my sit down long arm and this is the thickest of all. You can see it's pretty thick. Um, and I've also used, here's a fun tip. You can get that clear medical tape that's kind of bumpy. I'll put a link to it too. And you just tape it on the back a few pieces and it will make it um, stick to your quilt. Just gives it some friction. So, this is one of the ones that I'm going to recommend. It's from Westerly. It has a nice arc, a nice curve, and it also has a nice straight edge. So there's one. Here are some that came in a kit from Baby Lock. And this one has some curves and it also has some bigger curves. And then this is one of Angela Walter's rulers. This one is called Slim. And I really like this one because it has some great markings on it. Um, so I use this a lot. I use this one a lot and this one, I use this one a lot too. So let me see some more questions. Um, you're welcome. Someone says, thank you for the emails. You're welcome. I love, I love sharing sewing with people. It just makes me happy. Let's see here. What product do you recommend for marking your quilt? Um, I use all kinds of I don't do a lot of marking, but when I do mark, I'll use white chalk if it's on dark fabric or if it's on light fabric, I will use the blue um, quilting or fabric pen. You've probably seen the blue fabric pen in the store. Um, it's, there's, I think, different brands of it. Um, I can put some in the, in put a, I can find a link and put it down here, but it's just the, the blue pen that comes off with water. You just spritz it with water late after. Or like I said, if it's dark fabrics, then I will just use white chalk. And there's a white chalk pen that is helpful or really inexpensive, those little skinny round things to mark. All right, let's see here. So which do you prefer, rulers or just straightforward free motion quilting? You know, it depends on the mood I'm in. If I feel, if I have extra time and I wanna make things super precise, then I use my rulers. If I'm in a hurry and I just wanna get a baby quilt quilted so I can give it to the, New mom, then I don't. So let's see here. How can I order the kit? So I will put a link below when we're done. And um, also in the blog post that I write about this little video and about our quilt along that's gonna get started, I will also put links in there to this kit. Um, you don't have to buy this kit. Really, if you already have one or two rulers, one with an arc like this and one with a straight edge, that's really all you need. But in the kit, the kit also has a cute one for doing orange peel, um, which it doesn't help you do super fast orange peels, but it helps you do super accurate orange peels and clamshell. But you look at it and you're like, wow, I can do it so fast. No, you won't do it super fast, but you can do it super accurate. So any other questions? Oh, somebody asked, what is the best product to use on these rulers that keep them from slipping? Okay, just a minute. I'll be right back. I'll just go get it so I can show it to you. Okay, sorry. That's probably the worst thing you can do is leave during a live stream. So, um, let me fix this. Okay, so there are several products out there 
And this one has been my favorite just because it's the cheapest and easiest to find. I don't have to order it from anywhere. I just go to the drugstore. It's called Next Care Flexible Clear Tape. Uh, I think it's like five or six dollars for this from CVS or wherever you go to the drugstore. And then I just put little pieces on the back of my ruler and I can still see the lines through the ruler. Um, it doesn't mess up the visibility. And it does, it, it does work. So there's that. Uh, is this a class for intermediate sewists? Absolutely, this is a class for be beginners. Um, it's just that quote behind me, as I said. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to put it together, or you can just read the blog post and put it together with without my help. Uh, it's super easy quilt, and then we are just gonna quilt one little design in a four and a half inch square each week. So say for example, one design is going to be little um, starbursts. And we'll just do some little starbursts, a couple rows of starbursts in one square, and then you can go ahead and repeat it in all the squares of that color. And then that's it for that week. So it's gonna be super easy, super, super easy. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. I'm really excited to do this. So I'm going to go now and write a blog post about everything that we talked about. Oh, clamshell quilting. So the way I learned it is I do orange peels and clamshells with the same ruler. So there is a ruler that looks kind of like this, but not really. But anyway, there's a ruler that has bumps like this. And so to, to, to use that ruler, and you can really just use one bump at a time. And so if I wanted to use this to do clamshells, I would go ahead and I would do one little curve, and then I would move my ruler back to here, and I'd do one little curve, and then move my ruler back to here and do one little curve. Um, obviously, if I do this, I'm not going to get the clamshell effect. There are rulers that where these are closer together and you can get the clamshell effect, but you'd think that it would be really fast and easy and you could just hold this down on your on your fabric and you could just go whoop, 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 <laughs> and you'd have this like beautiful row of, of clamshells. And if you try it that fast, it's not gonna look beautiful, at least not in my experience. So this is like how fast I do my clamshells. For real, that's how fast I do them. So you can imagine how it's slower using the ruler, but on the other hand, it's it's perfect or close, you know, more perfect than I would do it by myself. So, and that's just to answer the question. It's It slows you down, but it can make it look really neat. All right, let's see here. C. Lombard said, I just purchased an AccuQuilt and clamshell die. You mean clamshell quilting, sewing the pieces together? Maybe we'll do a a um, clamshell tutorial, but that's, I think you mean actually sewing and I'll have to like plan that. That's a whole other thing to think about. If you mean clamshell, like little clamshell quilting, we'll definitely do some of that on this quilt. All right, so. I think that's all. Hey, thanks everybody for um, for just logging in and coming to my little live stream today. Uh, it's been really fun. Um, make sure that you get the SoCanchi newsletter. So go to SoCanchi.com and at the top where it says free newsletter, click and sign in. And then um, you'll get a link to the blog post that I'm gonna write with all of this information about when we're gonna get started and a little schedule um, the next, uh, live stream I'll do will be next week and we will talk about um how to I hope you're already going to cut your fabrics and all you need to do is cut three five inch strips from each fat quarter so each five inch by 22 inch strips three from each and of course I'll do three from these two too so I'll have all 14 and then arrange them in order that you want them from one to 14 and that's where we will pick up next week and I'll show you how to sew them together. And then you cut the strips and then you sew the columns together. And then we'll have a beautiful quilt like that. 
and after that we can start quilting. So let's see here. Um, yes, this live video I will post to my um, YouTube channel after this. So whoever misses the live stream could still watch it. Anyway, thanks everybody. It's been so much fun to talk to you. I really hope that you'll decide to pick a fact order bundle and come sew along with us. We're gonna learn lots of new things and make another beautiful quilt. So have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later.